I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. For me, what I'm proud of is that it's, it's normalizing something that should have been normalized a long time ago. It's not a crazy concept to me that women can lead giant franchises and make money for corporations. It's fine. How Ray beat Kylo Ren? Why is that so hard for people to get? Like, she's super strong and he's like so weak. <laughs> How do we get more women to make more movies? The women need to direct the movies, at least 50%, if I not agree. more. I <laughs> agree. I love women direct. I'm a feminist, by the way. Hey guys, let's talk about how Hollywood seems to genuinely hate men nowadays. On this channel, I've made it no secret that I am not a fan of the obvious feminist propaganda that seems to be part of almost every single TV show and film nowadays. And in response to that, I've gotten some comments saying, Lauren, what's wrong with feminism? What's wrong with entertainment pushing a pro-female empowerment message? And to that, I have to say, there's nothing wrong with female empowerment or being pro-woman, but the problem I have with the brand of feminism that Hollywood seems to be a fan of is that it's not just pro-woman, it's actively anti-man. And those are two very different things. Things. I think most reasonable people of either gender will agree that you don't need to tear one gender down in order to lift up the other. But tearing men down seems to be basically all Hollywood does nowadays. Lauren, what do you mean by that? Do you have any examples you could maybe show us? Well, I'm glad you asked, hypothetical viewer, because yes, I, I actually do. I have some notes here. So the first and I think most notable way that Hollywood tears down men nowadays is by having weak and sidelined male characters. We are living, it's no secret, in an era devoid of creativity, and as such, Hollywood increasingly relies on things like reboots and remakes. Basically, it seems like every studio out there nowadays is trying to revive their now dead but once popular franchises, and a lot of these franchises happen to have male leads. We're talking about Indiana Jones, Star Wars, uh, Star Trek, heck, Marvel, the list goes on. But what's notable is that in 98 percent of these reboots and remakes, even if the male characters of the original properties were initially competent, uh, strong leaders. In the modern iterations of these franchises, they are more often than not uh, relegated to the role of bumbling, incompetent nincompoop. Or at the very least, they are portrayed as less than their female counterparts. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is probably the most recent notable example of this. Indiana Jones historically, uh, in his original films, was portrayed as strong, as smart, intelligent. And not only that, but also morally upright. He had grit, he had determination. But fast forward to Dial of Destiny, and instead we see the once great Dr. Jones as easily overshadowed by his goddaughter of Phoebe Waller-Bridges. I'm not bothering to look up her character's name in the film because odds are you guys have forgotten it too. And in addition to not being as smart as Waller-Bridges, we also see that Dr. Jones has now just lost his zest for life. He wants to give up. He is completely demoralized. Is that the man we once saw in Raiders of the Lost Ark? I don't think so. Hashtag not my Dr. Jones. And that brings us to another example of a male lead who in the 2020s writers have just decided that actually they kind of suck. And that's Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars. In the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy, Obi-Wan Kenobi was presented as wise, sage, a master Jedi and a mentor who I think a lot of fans wished had gotten more screen time dedicated to him. And so when Disney Plus announced that Obi-Wan Kenobi would be getting his own series on the streaming platform, so many people were excited, especially considering that Ewan McGregor, who portrayed him in the prequel series, would be returning. However, the version of Obi-Wan they got in that show was very different to how fans had previously seen him. And actually, it has been argued that the show shouldn't have been called Obi-Wan in the first place when really the main character is arguably not him, but one of the female characters uh, like little Leia or that uh, the, the black girl. Again, 
I do not care enough to look up her name. And we're gonna be talking more about Hollywood's hatred for men, but first I do wanna say a big thank you to today's sponsor, Books. Valentine's Day is coming up, and if you're still looking for flowers to send to that special someone, then I highly recommend you check out Books. And what's really cool is that I've got you covered with 25% off your entire purchase at the Books Company, and that's Books short for bouquets. You see, Books is my go-to flower source, and here's why. Their flowers are cut fresh and sourced directly from some of the best flower farms on the planet, including, by the way, this is really cool, even farms on the side of a volcano. So they stay fresh way longer. And what I love about Books is that it's so easy. You can buy roses in just one click or choose one of their unique modern designs that you can't find anywhere else, including their 100 red roses that I'm sure you've heard about. Valentine's Day is February 14th, by the way. So coming up really fast, I already placed my order early and picked my delivery date. So don't believe it when she says, oh, you don't need to get me anything. Go ahead, get her something. Show her that you care. Surprise her with some flowers, something a little nice. Be the hero and go to books.com and use the promo code Lauren for 25% off. Again, that's B-O-U-Q-S.com with the promo code Lauren. Books with the promo code Lauren. And now I'm not a huge fan of Star Trek, I will admit it, but from what I understand watching videos about the series, it's a similar situation with the show Picard. I'm not gonna attempt to portray myself as any type of authority when it comes to Picard or any of the shows that that character has been in, but from what I understand, in the 2020 series, that character has also gone through a redesign to make him bitter, angry, and less competent so that his younger and more female and diverse characters can outshine him. And I mean, really, this disrespect toward male characters, it's a pattern that once you start noticing it, you really can't stop. Which brings us to The Witcher, which is a similar story, but a little different. Even though The Witcher was a very popular and established franchise in terms of the gaming industry and, of course, the books, until Netflix chose to adapt it, it had never been seen as a TV show. You know what? After the first season was released, a lot of people, myself included, were kind of pleasantly optimistic. Was it a perfect show? No, but it was pretty good. However, then the second season happened and inevitably the third season, and eventually it became clear that the people involved with the show, the showrunners, the writers, they weren't actually interested in having a series focused on The Witcher. They were instead interested in telling the stories of female characters uh, like Ciri, like Yennefer. And so if you watch those later seasons of The Witcher, what you essentially see is that even though Geralt isn't necessarily portrayed as incompetent or weak, he ultimately is put in a position where he is relegated to supporting character in his own series. I mean, there was Ryan Gosling's portrayal of Ken in the Barbie film, which even though I thought he did a really fun job with that role, let's face it, the whole point of Ken is to present a male character who is useless, but simultaneously entitled and patriarchal and controlling. We also have the He-Man show that Netflix put out, which I debated even including here because I'm not a He-Man fan, but I've heard from fans of the original show that he was definitely done dirty in this reboot. It was basically an excuse once more to focus on a female character from the original franchise while using the popularity of the male character. The male character who, by the way, doesn't even end up being the focus of the show. And it's not just reboots and remakes that have these male characters who really only exist to be stupid or useless or controlling or to make the female characters look better. Let's look at some of Disney's latest original films as an example. We've got Strange World and Elemental. In Strange World for male characters, we have the toxic grandfather, the beta male father, or the, yes, gay son. Great role models there, shining masculinity, and in Elemental, the male lead is, oh yeah, crying 95% of the time. Like, there's nothing wrong with female leads, don't get me wrong, but it's just kind of weird when they happen in franchises that were previously led by males. And yes, not all male characters need to be strong or good leaders or super smart and capable, but we've gotten to a point in Hollywood where male characters characters are so often the opposite of that. They are just garbage in different ways where it's now actually hard to name a male character who is strong and capable and a leader and classically masculine. I mean, one example of it in a current show, I guess, would be the character of Reacher, but guess what? That character has been accused of having toxic masculinity. I mean, I guess Ethan Hunt from the Mission Impossible series is the closest we would get nowadays to just like a strong, competent, moral male character. Another sign of Hollywood's disrespect toward men nowadays is the sheer number of male characters who have now been gender bent to become female. There is a shocking number of very popular, uh, classic male characters out there whom Hollywood has now decided actually should be portrayed as female because reasons. 
reasons being diversity. Doctor Who is a great example of this. And to turn our attention toward the comics industry specifically, there are a number of characters of superheroes who were traditionally male, but in the modern iteration of the characters, the people behind the comics have decided actually it would be better if now it's a woman. For example, we've seen that now even in the cinematic universe, uh, Iron Man, Tony Stark has been kind of replaced by Ironheart or Riri Williams. And this gender bent is actually super progressive because not only is a man becoming a woman, but we also have a white character now being black. And as Hollywood knows, if you have the chance to make a character black, well, you probably should because it's just better. It's just better if everybody is black. We also have the Thor, Lady Thor relationship going on, which again, now not only exists in the comic world, but also on screen in Thor, Love and Thunder. Yeah, Natalie Portman did take up the mantle or the hammer as Lady Thor. Speaking of popular franchises that have done this in the Charlie's Angels remake by, what's her name? Oh yeah, Elizabeth Banks. Bosley is now a female played incidentally by Elizabeth Banks. It hasn't happened yet, but there's also rumors that the future James Bond will be portrayed by a woman. I mean, in the last James Bond film that was released, we already saw that 007 or like that call sign uh, was taken by a female character who again was not only female, but also black. And to anybody who might say, well, Lauren, gender swapping isn't inherently anti-male just because they want a female to now take on this role. But think about it. How often does gender swapping go the opposite way? How many times are female characters made into male characters? Seems to be pretty one-sided if you ask me. Which brings us to the concept of emasculating female characters. As I said before in this very video, there is nothing wrong with strong female leads. In fact, there are a lot of films that I enjoy that I love that features strong female characters. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If our entertainment is supposed to be a mirror or representation of reality, then obviously strong female characters should exist in media because strong females exist in real life. However, and I think this is due to a lot of writers just being terrible narcissists themselves, uh, Hollywood films and shows have a tendency to not just make their strong female characters, you know, competent or let's just say outgoing, but actually actively emasculating toward their male colleagues or friends. A good example of this, of course, is Brie Larson's portrayal of Captain Marvel. It's not just enough for Carol Danvers to be unreasonably supercharged in terms of her powers and stronger than every male on screen. No, she also has to be kind of a dick toward them. Got a smile for me? Phoebe Waller-Bridges from Indiana Jones, another emasculating female lead. She can't just be uh, Dr. Jones's protege who is really excited to learn from this accomplished man. No, she actually has to be better than him and put him down and remind him that he's old news and she's where it's at. And hey, we have She-Hulk. And yeah, it should not escape your notice that a lot of these examples come specifically from Disney. In the first episode of She-Hulk's first and only season, because it was that bad, they canceled it. She-Hulk goes on an explicit rant toward Bruce Banner about how she is better than him, how she is more equipped to handle rage than him. We have to make sure of your ability to tolerate distress and regulate your emotions, especially your anger. Here's the thing, Bruce, I'm great at controlling my anger. When I'm catcalled in the street, when incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me. Yeah, it can't just be that She-Hulk has great emotional control that she's personally had to work on. It has to be that she is actively better than Bruce. And her being just better than Bruce isn't something that we see through dialogue only either. The show makes it a point to show She-Hulk throwing things further than Bruce, uh, doing her exercises better than Bruce. Would it have been that hard to write a character that stands on her own merit, that just has her own accomplishments and strengths, but that doesn't need to be compared to a male counterpart the entire show. More recently, we also see the same pattern in the show Echo. Again, another Disney property. That entire show, we see Echo scowling, bossing around the men in her life while the really only other female character, her cousin, is shown to, you know, of course be competent and morally righteous. Another show I will mention here, even though I actually don't hate it, is this latest season of True Detective. That's True Detective Night Country. I still might do a video dedicated solely uh, to that season of the show. People have complained it's woke and they're not necessarily wrong, but at the same time, I'm still having fun watching it because I don't know, it's just intriguing. It's a murder mystery. I'm a sucker for those. But in that show, you have not one, but 
two lady cop characters who spend the entire show basically just talking down to their male colleagues and subordinates. And it's like the writers have gone out of their way to show that these two cops, these two women, they're the only competent ones on the force. And actually all of the male stereotypes that you would associate with being like a hardened cop, these women have them. You see, like they're hardened cops, but they're women crazy, right? Meanwhile, the male characters are just incompetent, corrupt, or super green behind the ears. We also see that in recent years, Hollywood and really the access media have spent a significant amount of time insulting male fans. And I don't want to go into that too much because really that could be a video in and of itself. But today it seems like anytime a show or a film does not do well, Hollywood's go-to response is to blame the fans. And they don't outright say that, oh, it's because we just hate men. Instead, what they'll do is they'll say things like, oh, it's because of toxic masculinity or sexism that this isn't doing well, which I mean, yeah, is basically them saying the problem is the male audience. Which is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Because if the majority of moviegoers or fans of a specific franchise like Star Wars or The Witcher uh, or Star Trek, if they're all male and you're just crapping on the supposedly toxic gamers or sexists out there, like maybe after a certain point, the people who you've been bad mouthing as bigots are gonna stop giving you money. And so the last thing I wanna bring up here, and this is probably one of the most tangible examples of how Hollywood absolutely hates men, is their insistence on prioritizing female creatives over male creatives. And here we're not just talking about, oh, this fictional character is unflattering toward men. They're actively excluding men from opportunities because of their gender. Now it could be argued that historically Hollywood discriminated against female creatives, specifically like writers and directors. And obviously I don't support that either, but I'm of the belief that past discrimination doesn't warrant or excuse current discrimination. But it seems like current discrimination is exactly what a lot of Hollywood executives have in line when they're choosing who should be in charge of current projects. We've gotten to a point in society where where discrimination against men is just so common and accepted that studios won't even hide the fact that they were specifically looking for females to be in charge of certain films. It doesn't matter if the female applicants in question have absolutely no experience in the role that the studio is looking to fill. What really matters here are the diversity points. Specifically, let's look at Eternals, a film that was directed by Chloe Zhao, who yeah, in addition to being a woman was also ethnic, so pretty big deal. But here's the thing, had absolutely no experience directing big budget sci-fi fantasy films. And in a very similar story, we also saw that the Marvels was directed by Nia DaCosta, who again, had absolutely no experience directing big budget CGI heavy films like the Marvels. Is it a coincidence that both of those films were disappointments, not only critically, but at the box office? I don't really think so. And it kind of seems to me like the people over at Disney don't understand just in terms of sheer production logistics or creativity, how much really depends on a film's director. I think the people over at Disney and Marvel, they're just thinking that, well, if we get enough producers on board to kind of oversee things, it doesn't really matter who the actual director is because they'll have a lot of support. So we should probably just get a diverse female to direct. Uh, that way we get the brownie points and we can kind of manage other things. It's like, no, directors, actually do a lot for the films they direct. And it's like, if you want a female director, but there are apparently no female directors or not enough female directors who are available that have experience with big budget tentpole films, then maybe you shouldn't get a female director. Maybe you should just worry about someone who's competent and qualified and has a track record of success. It seems like a pretty easy lesson in my opinion to learn, but obviously Disney still hasn't gotten the message because when it comes to the upcoming, maybe postponed, maybe delayed, I don't know, Ray film, they've once again done the same thing. They have chosen this random female director, absolutely no experience dealing with the type of film that they're gonna be making. And it's like, you guys really hate men so much. You resent males so much that you would rather give hundreds of millions of dollars to a woman with absolutely no experience then have a man in charge. Absolutely insane, and I don't know about you guys, but I will shed absolutely no tears when these projects continue inevitably to fail. That's basically all I have to say for now though, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.